Hi, my name is Chan Sutter. I'm a percussionist and teaching artist. And I'm here with your very first conga lesson. To jump right in, we're going over the basic fundamentals of the conga drum. For me, fundamentals always mean technique, sound quality, rhythm. As far as the technique goes, everybody's hands, arms, fingers, wrists are different. So find what works for you. I'm going to give you how I learned to play the congas, the techniques that I learned, and you adjust accordingly, which the technique then leads into the sound production, the tones, the sonido, as they say, of the drum. You have many different sounds that the congo drum makes. I'm going to show you the most common basic strokes and styles. And then finally, the rhythm is putting it all together. And I think of it as building blocks. Technique, sound production, rhythm. To start, you have your open tone. Also, quick note, this is how you play a conga drum. You can use these techniques that I'm about to show you today on many different types of drums that are Afrocentric or from the Af African diaspora, from West Africa and Brazil. But this is specific to the conga drum, so keep that in mind if you're adapting to other instruments. The first sound that we make is an open tone. All I'm doing is I'm taking my hand right here below where the fingers start from the palm on the far side of your river, placing it on the edge of the drum so that my hand is not touching the rim, but it's on the edge. From here, I take my fingers off and I rest my hands on the edge and I lift the hand and I strike the drum. Notice I'm not bouncing off the drum. This is not a very traditional conga technique. I let the fingertips bounce and the hand rests, both hands. This is an open tone. Now, from here we have, in the same playing position, or close to, a muffled tone, or a muffled stroke, or a muff. What we're doing here is we're actually pressing the fingertips into the skin to get a whip. And I like to imagine my wrist pops up like it's following the action of my fingers. Now don't actually do that, that's just a visual cue or a mental cue. From here, notice I'm alternating between my hands. I'm going to come onto the drum a little bit more, and I'm going to cut my fingers ever so slightly. And we're going to do what's called a closed slap, or a tapado. Everybody's hands are different. There's probably many different ways to play a slap. This is how I play a slap, and this is how I recommend you play a slap. This is the most difficult sound on the conga drum, in my humble opinion. What you're basically doing is you're trying to get the far edge of your hand and your fingertips to connect on the skin at the exact same time to get a crack, a closed sound. Open, closed. Open, closed. Now, I cut my hands very slightly, but you want to go as flat as possible. I've seen some people come really far into the drum. That kind of works. I cut my hands ever so slightly. From here, you could do four sounds of each, alternating between your hands, meaning right, left, right, left, three times, open, muff, slap, like this. One, two, three, four, muff, two, three, four, slap, two, three, four. You can add as many, you can cycle that, you can do two on each hand, one, Go in between the sounds. Maybe like a, a ladder. Go between slaps, mutes and slaps and opens. Whatever combination you want. From here, the last two sounds that are really common in Cuban conga drumming is a bass tone. 
and the fingertip. Notice my hand is flat, coming straight down onto the drum. And then from this position, I just lift up from the fingertips as if someone's pulling my fingertips by a string. Fingertip, fingertip. Then we can combine them, bass, tone. I've also heard heel, toe. I've also heard palm, tip, bass, tip, whatever you want to call it. Then you can do it again. You could either alternate or you can do twos, fours, threes, whichever floats your boat. Meaning, I like to do four sometimes. And this is going to be the beginning of a tumbao or a traditional conga pattern we play using this technique. So from here, I highly recommend you spend 10-15 minutes before every practice session focusing on your tones, on your sound quality, on the technique, meaning a couple minutes here. Start feeling the weight of your arms so you don't have to hit so hard. Then do a grouping of eight with each sound. I'm gonna do bass, open, mute, slap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Open. On and on and so forth. Moving straight ahead. We have talked about the technique. I want to, we ha, sorry, we talked about the sound qualities and the sound production. We didn't talk about the technique per se. Again, everybody's hands are different. I keep my fingers close together because if I don't, my pinkies tend to really uh, travel away just based off of the shape of my hand. So I, I don't squeeze, there's not tension in my hands. It's nice and relaxed, but uh, I try and keep the fingers generally together. Notice, Shoulders are relaxed, arms are down. I've got some, uh, some spine stuff, so my shoulders are uneven. Sometimes your arms cock out at different angles. Doesn't matter, it's whatever makes the best sound. It doesn't have to look perfect. But notice my elbows aren't flared, up, flared out and my wrists aren't dropped. My elbows are tucked in and it's just an extension of my arm, a natural extension. Also notice I'm moving this drum around to angle away from me so I have more range of motion with my wrist and my arm. If you angle it like this way, sometimes you see people playing like this, you have very little range of motion now. Move that away, now look at the angle, much further. So, I think of it leading from the fingertips and using the wrist and a little bit of an arm. So it's not straight up and down, no wrist. It's not no arm. It's a combination of both that feels really natural and ergonomic. That just applies to everything. Maybe for that, notice I don't lead with my fingertips. It's more elbow. But when you get into the quicker motion, it's way more wrist. Bigger motion, bigger muscle groups. Smaller motion, smaller muscle groups. Okay, from here, the basic rhythm, the very first rhythm you should learn is a simple tune bao. This is in salsa music. This is in son non tuno. The, there are hundreds of variations, thousands of variations of this rhythm. This is the most basic one. Starts with a bass, tip, slap, tip. And that's left, left, right, left. Bass, tip, slap, tip. Left, left, right, left. That's the first half. Second half starts exactly the same. Bass, tip, tone, tone. Left, left, right, right. Left, left, right, right. Left, left, right, right. Put it together. Bass, tip, slap. Notice you can do little touches 
that's an additional sound bonus tip for you you can have different angles when you have an, a two drum tumba which happens at different parts of, of a, a salsa tune or in a different section maybe in the mambo section on the three side of clave you're going to add in two tones over here and that how that sounds is left sorry bass tip slap tone tone tip tone tone left left right 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 left right right and that happens on the three side of clave typically meaning ba ba playing a nice slow cha-cha-cha and this is kind of the, the pattern you're doing you can add in a, a, an extra bass here to kind of fill up the sound and what I mean is this which would be the same as boom, boom, boom. etc etc a little bit faster The slap, the bass, the tip, palm tip, heel toe, whatever you want to call it. Talked about the technique and we applied it to one of the most common and most important rhythms on the conga drum, a tumbao. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm starting this new series. I hope you like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email. Link down in the description. I also want to give a shout out to some of the people I work with especially those guys over at congamasterclass.com. They have an incredible website that has so much material from popular music to folkloric music, to drumming, to timbal, to bongo. It's taught by Michael Spiro, my godfather and mentor, and Jesus Diaz, a good friend, as well as Phil Hawkins. So give them a follow on YouTube, on Instagram, go subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.